will tell you in nine years as, as a superintendent of the fourth largest district in this state, uh, I have not been more inspired by a project that has been student driven than by this. It helped me got like to communicate with my parents more because usually we don't have much, we don't communicate much. This is one of the best programs. This is the only reason I, I like to come to school because of this. I mean, there's a lot of other clubs, but I mean, the art venture, I like it, you know. We have amazing teachers, and they all support you in what you're doing. It's so powerful to see the students engage, thinking about the stories. This is the best that education can offer, these kinds of projects. Stories of Home began in the English classroom when we previewed videos and looked at historical footage and interviews of mom veterans. And once students had built some background knowledge, we read some stories and poems and memoirs by Hmong writers and other Southeast Asian writers. I came across a book uh, by a Hmong writer by the name of Kalkalia Yang, The Late Homecomer. And I was really astounded by the very poetic nature of the book and it lent itself very nicely to visual imagery. You know, we worked with the ELA department, Ms. Reimer and Mr. Garcia, and they taught their kids how to interview and go out and collect a lot of the stories that are already out there. Students chose people they would like to interview for this project um, from the Southeast Asian regions, and they came up with interview questions, they uh, wrote a narrative based on the interview, and then those pieces of writing were passed on to art students. I wrote about my mom's story, her experience and everything that she did in Thailand, and how she got here. What she'd been through, I never knew anything about it until this project came up. So they did some creative writing as well as the interviews. And other than that book, those stories were the inspiration for this project. In the spring, we used some of these uh, ideas that we had come up with and they turned these pieces into poetry, short stories of their own, which were then also passed on to art students so that they could continue with their art. I am just amazed at the final product. I was stunned by the scope of it. I think I didn't expect it to be so big, so holistic, for there to be so many dimensions. There is something very beautiful about many, many different hands coming together to make sure that one story is told. Any of those connections, I think, where students get to get out into the community and, and interact, and interact as individuals with creativity and things to say, I think those are the kinds of things that the community really uh, should support because that's not happening everywhere. It reminded me like of when my mom would tell me a story of how they came here to America and how they would have to buy their way to get on boats and travel here and some people didn't make it. I think this project is so valuable for this particular population because so often we don't see our stories in published books. So often we don't see pictures of ourselves reflected by the communities we live in. It's like involved us about our own people. I think it really reinforces how important education is when it relates to who we are as individuals. And we look at the art that's around here this evening uh, and displaying uh, the talent of the students who have taken the time to reflect a, a very important part of the Hmong history uh, that's reflected in stories of home. Uh, it's important that we never forget these stories. It is the most phenomenal, complete um, piece of work generated by our, by our students that I've seen. Uh, and it is inspiring, it is educational, and it is something that I know our students will take with them for the rest of their lives and has helped to enhance our community. And it is something that um, I am very proud to be a superintendent of a school district in which this kind of work gets done. 